my name is Tomasz Turk. I'm Vice Dean for Research at the Faculty of Computer Information Science. And I'm also re responsible for the doctoral studies at our faculty. Um, so welcome, everybody. So the topic for today is uh, the, the doctoral studies at three. And I hope we'll provide some useful information and motivate you um, why study at three. So why become a doctoral student at our faculty? Um, I'm sure that the reasons why somebody uh, decides to become a researcher are varied and different, right? Everybody has his own motivations. But I think that the underlying theme is this uh, wish to discover new things, perhaps a wish to uh, give back something to the society and improve the society through science. So I, I hope that this is at least part of your motivation, right? Um, the road to a doctoral degree is quite difficult and challenging at times, right? Um, but perhaps we should start with uh, the motivation, why, why you would become a doctoral student. And today with, with us is uh, Giga Lesser, who uh, after a while decided to come back to our faculty and uh, become a doctoral student. So please, Giga, um, perhaps you can spend a few words on why did you chose choose to enroll yeah. in doctor studies so uh, hi everyone uh, now Tomas already mentioned that um, to to be a doctoral student you have to you have to have a desire to to learn new things to you know research something new to find out how things work and um, from my from my perspective this is just a part of the story and um, it's it's always you know a, a balance. First of all, you have to make a living out of uh, out of the things you do, and um, on the other hand, you also have to enjoy uh, what you do. And in this respect, people are obviously different. And I think that uh, apart from from having a desire to to learn to uh, to discover. Uh, apart, from, apart from that, you also um, need to have courage, you know, courage to, to do something new. And um, me, as, as, as I have uh, some, some experience from the industry, it's, it's always been uh, a balance for the, for the company as well, you know, the, the balance between uh, making a profit and between um, leaving your, uh, your employees to do something they they actually want to do and to do something new, so it's a it's a balance between uh, giving someone the time to research and you know getting the return on that investment, and I think here at the faculty this uh, this uh, return on investment can actually come uh, quite later, and this is from my perspective the greatest difference between between those two um, extremes um, yeah that's but perhaps to give a little more background right so you you finished your master thesis uh, when uh, it was last year uh -huh. yeah I've been working on my master's thesis uh, while I was uh, employed at the uh, company mm -hmm. and um, it was always it was kind of a you know a struggle finding the time to work on, on something I really enjoyed doing, and um, it was like you know doing something I wanted to do because it was it was a a, a topic I chose it was something I wanted to to uh, research and improve, uh, and on the other hand I had my you know re regular job and you know uh, just balancing the time I was, uh, I was willing to invest on one thing or the other thing. This was the major um, decision to make. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, coming from, from that background, I guess, you know, being a doctoral student means that you, that you need to put a lot of time and effort into, into these things. And uh, I guess it's, it's something that you should want to do. It's, uh, it's something that um, that you like doing. You you choose your own research field. You choose your own topic, and so on and so on. So it it should be something you like doing. Uh, it should be something you're interesting in, and uh, you want to improve that field. 
Yeah, okay. basically that. So now you are the doctor studies for uh, let's say one semester and a little more, no? Yeah. So how like how, do, how do you find it? So is it what you expected, or you now would like to go back <laughs> to, to uh, yeah, well, working for a company? It's <laughs> it's what I expected, yeah, yeah. Mo mostly. Um, it's like um, I, I'm I'm employed as a teaching assistant here at the faculty as well, and I will always enjoy teaching. So it, here it's a balance between you know teaching and research. Uh, so. For me, that's not a problem. For, for some people employed here, obviously, it's a problem. Uh, but if you like both parts, if you enjoy doing both research and, uh, and teaching, I guess that this is, this is the perfect choice. Okay. okay. Any questions, perhaps, for Giga at this time? Otherwise, we'll have plenty of time for questions at the very end. Okay. So, thank you, Giga. Thank you. Um, so, our doctoral studies is really the top doctoral studies in computer science, and we can prove this uh, with our students that went through the, to the study. So here are just a few names of uh, recent graduates um, that went abroad. Of course, we have many other graduates that work more locally, right? Uh, but there are just, let's say, these big companies uh, like Google and Facebook uh, where our students can where the doors for our students are wide open, I think. Uh, and then, of course, you can go to a company or you can try with a startup. We have an example of a successful startup, Genialis, which was founded by two of our doctoral students. Uh, the startup is based on the research that was done at the faculty in one of the laboratories. So basically, this is a spin out of our faculty. And of course, we have also very bright uh, students that are now uh, researchers at such uh, highly prized uh, universities uh, like Stanford. So Marin Kajitnik is one really, really bright example of a really successful doctor student. So I think that once you finish the doctor studies at our faculty, uh, the doors are open to many different types of further employment, depending really on your on your preferences. Um, so as a doctor student, you spend most of the time doing research. And this is something that you will have to do under the supervision of an advisor. So if you still don't know who your advisor will be, there is a list of potential advisors on the web page you should explore. So for each uh, potential advisor, you, you will find a, a short description of the research topics that he is interested in. Uh, and also with a link to the, his homepage so you can learn more. And I encourage those of you who are not still uh, sure who the advisor will be to contact as many uh, advisors as possible just to see which is the best fit because choosing, selecting the right advisor is, the, let's say, the most uh, crucial part of uh, starting uh, doctoral studies. So the, these 45 advisors work in 19 different laboratories that cover these six uh, major areas. And our faculty is uh, for, known for a very long time uh, in these fields of machine learning and artificial intelligence. This is a really strong field of ours. Um, closely connected is also machine perception and multimedia. And of course, we also cover other areas of computer science. So we really want to attract also students from other areas, not just machine learning. Um, so one example of a research outcome that is uh, world renowned and uh, uh, acknowledged is the orange data mining suit. This is a software tool that was initially developed for to teach data mining and machine learning. But over time, uh, it has grown into a, a serious tool that can be used in, for, for serious research and also in companies. So now we have a, a really wide base of users. Uh, so you can see here over 1,000 daily downloads of this software, uh, a number of 3,000 and more subscribers to our YouTube channel where, the, where you can uh, learn how to use it. Uh, and there are close to half a million views on YouTube of the tutorials that teach you how to use this data mining tool. Another area that I mentioned before is computer vision. Uh, and uh, here uh, we are really proud of this visual object uh, tracking initiative that started in 2013. So uh, the 
part of the team that started this uh, initiative is based at our faculty. Uh, and this is uh, an example of really uh, achieving a high impact on the wider research community because this initiative uh, somehow standardized the visual object tracking problem, right? So they provided a framework, they provided a set of tools, they provided data sets which are always critical to ever evaluate new tracking uh, software and they were able to build uh, this really large community uh, from all over the world that is focused on this research topic. And in, in this occasion, I would like to ask Alan to come here. So Alan is one of the members of this uh, initiative and also of the laboratory that is behind it. So perhaps Alan, you can uh, tell us a bit, a little bit more about uh, not the specifics of this, but perhaps just how the research work uh, looks like looks like in general, um, perhaps what is the role of the supervisor mm -hmm. that you that you see as a so Lu Alan is now pretty much close to finishing his uh, uh, doctorate right so he fulfilled all the requirements in terms of publications even before he started his PhD study so he's really highly productive perhaps you can tell us something uh, what is your secret as well <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, my name is Alan Lukasic and I'm a young researcher here at the faculty. I'm in third year of the study and I think that the PhD study is appropriate for everyone who likes uh, working on problems which are not known how to be solved in advance. And um, I found um, very important that uh, students uh, have at least rough idea about the topic uh, which uh, they will be working on. Uh, my experience is that having a solid knowledge about the topic uh, definitely helps in a um, good start in the, in the PhD. Then the second uh, important uh, thing uh, at the, before the beginning of the study uh, I think is the, the, the selection of the, the supervisor. Um, Having a mentor who is um, uh, expert in his field, uh, I think is very he uh, helpful for, uh, for a student. And uh, on free, we have a lot of mentors which are among the top researchers uh, on their fields. Um, and an another um, good thing uh, before the beginning of the study is to, to know the, the, the mentor, so uh, you know his style of work and so the quality of the, of the study uh, can be much higher. Um, and the, the quality of mentor also uh, impacts the, the time we, we, which needs to be um, spent by the student and usually um, there is this perception that uh, students, PhD students are working uh, all the time but um, my experience is completely different. Um, I can say that I am able to, to do all, all the work which needs to be done during the, the working hours. So I have most of the weekends um, completely time for, for myself. And, um, but of course there are some high peaks during the year, especially before some conference deadlines where some time needs to be sacrificed. Um, so I will um, finalize this, this with the final thought. Um, I think that PhD study on free is a very good option and there are a lot of aspects which um, impact the final success of, of the study. But at the end the most important is uh, students will and hard work which is he um, want to, to put in, in, the, in, the, in the study. So, so, but still, the hard work, but still in, yeah. in those eight uh, or ten I would hours say max. Fo focused hard work. <laughs> focused, yeah. So, <laughs> and time to reset. <laughs> uh -huh. So, but still, this is uh, at least a, it's a mystery for me, right? So, you say that you have free weekends, but you're still able to produce a number of publications uh, yeah. and results, right? So, I mean, I still don't. <laughs> understand how you, you I do find it. these two things uh, very important uh, solid background I uh, I was doing my master from the same topic I'm researching now and I think this is very important uh, for this 
And uh, of course, uh, having very good mentor is um, also so very one fo part focused of the mentor <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. gives you just the right work where the let's say the yeah. chances of success are high. Yeah, because sure. most of usually most of the research time is yeah does not really yeah. lead to good results. No? If yeah, it's so, looking for an answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any questions for Adam, perhaps? Okay. Thank you. Thanks. So now I'll uh, give the word to Daniel Skochai, who is the uh, uh, in charge of the doctor studies at our faculty. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm the coordinator of the doctor studies. So um, if you have any question about that, you can also address it to me. I will just briefly describe um, how does the study program looks like. So it's. I won't go into details, uh, we can discuss that later on, but just to, to give an impression. Uh, so um, we have like from this year on, so it will be the first generation actually that will enroll into the four year doctoral study. Until now, it was officially three years uh, long, right? But don't be scared, I mean, nothing will actually uh, change. Uh, even a single student uh, until now um, did not finish his PhD in three years. So all of them uh, needed at least four. And so from, from practical, practical point of view, uh, we will just recognize the, you know, the complexity of the study officially, right? So um, what we did, we actually inserted this third year of individual research work as an official year of study, which was already uh, what was happening uh, now. So, um, um, but still, if you would like to finish before I have to, in three years, you can still do that. So you can somehow uh, finish it earlier, but believe me, there won't be a lot of students to do that. Not because it's, b b simply because, you know, the stu PhD study is, is challenging, right? It's not like undergraduate, so you, you do not learn, only learn something new. The main point here is to, to contribute something new. So. The main uh, uh, point of every PhD is our contribution to science, right? This is what is expected from any one of you, and you will be focused on this from the very beginning to the very end. Uh, so uh, how, how does the uh, study program look, li look like? So we have most of the, most of the work uh, that you will invest in your PhD is actually uh, research work, right? Uh, doctoral, uh, doctoral dissertation preparation, individual research work, and so on. So, this is the main the main point, right, of, of your PhD. In addition to that, we have a couple of courses that are supposed to help you with this research work, right? We have five seminars in first and second year. We have seminar one and two and three and four. Uh, and they are basically seminar one and three um, discuss related work. So. Officially, what you have to do here is to study related work, to analyze it, to find out what's good and what's, what's bad, what can you contribute, how can you go over this related work, and so on, and, how, and then to relate this related work to your own work. Uh, so this is something that you have to do that anyway, right? So we are just guiding you when to do what, but this is something that has to be done anyway, even without those courses. Seminar two and four are also, um, you learn how to write papers, how to write uh, like technical writing and so on. So something that will help you with your PhD as well. Seminar five is basically uh, the final course that you have to pass, uh, which is basically when you have your PhD written, you submit it to the committee. Uh, and the committee um, gives you the comments and so on, and then you defend that and you have like an oral um, public and then private presentation of, of your dissertation in front of the committee. And here you get the final comments from the committee. And when they approve that, that what you've written is good enough for, for PhD, then you're done. Or, you know, you're done when you defend it, but this final defense, it's a kind of celebration with your friends. So uh, this is the final milestone actually that you have to, you have to pass. So again, officially it's a course, but basically it's just, we call it pre-defense, a kind of uh, preparation for defense. So basically those five courses are really something that is strictly connected to your PhD. It's not course as we know it, it's more 
uh, part of research work. Then we have scientific skills one and, and, and two. Scientific skills one, in the first year, at the very beginning, in the first semester, you learn some soft skills. How to write technical writing, how to write, uh, write in English, how to find the, the, the references, how to cite, how to, um, you know, some ethical issues and, and such things, right? So really some useful soft skills that you need to write a PhD, right? And uh, scientific skills too, it's typically, it's, yeah, it's scheduled for the last year, is when, when you learn and practice how to write the project proposals. So I think that basically we think that it's very important that you know, someone that holds a PhD should be able to not only to do research, but also to find uh, funding for, for, for research. That's why we put this course in the, first, in the last year where you already finished with your PhD, so you know what to write about, and probably what you'd like to do is to write some project proposal for use postdoc or something like that. So if you wish to pass this course in, in the third year, this, this can be done as well, right? To, to focus only on PhD in, on the last year. But this is the main intention of this, um, of this course. Uh, so all of these courses are very related to, to research. Only four courses are the courses that you, you, know, you know from, from your previous study that are usually given um, and have a very similar format than the classical courses. Um, and and uh, they are yeah, in the first and the second year. So we offer a number of, of courses you can select from. These courses are given every second year so that we kind of pull students, that there is more students attending the same course so that the students can even collaborate within each other. So um, even in the seminars, uh, the students are very encouraged to present their work to the others so that you not only work on your PhD, but you also listen to your peers and you learn something more than just your narrow field that uh, you co you're conducting research on. So um, uh, we have uh, currently, we have this list, but this list is, can be even extended. We'll see every year we update these lists of, of courses that are given in order to offer as wide um, you know, uh, selection as possible. Because uh, also these courses are not intended that, you know, that, you, that there is something that you have to pass and it's not related to your PhD. So our hope is that these courses are helping you with your PhD, right? So do you select the courses that will help you to achieve all the goals that you set in your PhD topic proposal um, um, uh, even, even faster? So, um, and I, I always say, so it's, even these courses, um, they are not like on the, in the first or second Bologna cycle, right? So in, I, I always say, I look at the PhD students differently than on freshmen in the first year. Right, so the PhD students are our colleagues, right? Usually they work with our, at our, in our labs or, so it's like the, the, the like this um, way of how the, these courses are, are given is a kind of different, right? And in typically the, the, the greater uh, part of these courses is the project that uh, the students do, which is uh, usually, it, it, you know, hopefully, is really related to his or her PhD, so that um, you basically do both things simultaneously. Uh, from the official point of view, maybe, maybe I just didn't mention, but in the second year, you have to um, uh, basically to prepare the PhD topic proposal, right? So, and then you officially uh, submit this to the university. And then you get this PG topic proposal uh, approved. And then a committee is assigned that actually follows your work until the very end, right? So uh, here you really, in the, in the middle, so basically in the, uh, one month ago, basically in the beginning of the March, we have this deadline for submission of PG topic and propo proposal. So we have, let's say, one year, like three semesters um, uh, time to really crystallize your idea what will you concretely do, right? So try thinking about your PhD topic already now, right? And when you found a supervisor, talk to him or to her. Uh, and at, at, at this time, you, you, you should know what, you, what you'll do. And as, I don't know, Jiga mentioned, this is really, uh, you know, you will live with this problem for, you know, four years. And, you will spend a lot of time on, the, uh, time on that, and you really should enjoy it doing that, right? So that's my main message. Uh, PhD study is not like 
first or second cycle. In the first and second life cycle, you learn something that others did, right? You learn how to use something that others developed. Here, the main emphasis is not only to learn, but it's the mainly is to, to do something new, right? So to contribute something, to, to develop something new, so to invent something new. And uh, you must have this drive to do that, right? Um, so, yeah. This is about the, 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 the uh, program. We uh, adopted this program a couple of years ago um, after we had a lot of discussions with the students. So basically, we improved the, the program according to, to the students' responses, basically. There is not a lot of students. There is a, you know, a, a 10, 12, up to 15 students every year, basically. So we can better adapt what we do to, to, to do the best interest of, 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 of everyone. Right? Um, so we really want to, uh, to uh, position our PhD study, as, as well as research in general, uh, in, um, in international um, area, right? So like for every PhD student, the collaboration, international collaboration is crucial like dissemination of, their, of his own ideas, reading the papers, discussing with other peers all around the, the Europe, all around the world about his research, about their research. So this is where the actual value um, uh, comes to the place, right? So our faculty, we really collaborate with, you know, uh, all these purple uh, colored uh, countries. Uh, there are just a couple of, of um, uh, universities uh, listed from all the continents, basically, that uh, we collaborate with. Um, and we really very, very encourage this uh, exchange of ideas and, and the research visits and so on. We even, at the faculty level, we offer some internal fund for uh, um, you know, co-financing this research visits and conference visits. So if you publish a paper on a great conference, then you can ask for a refund from, from the, our uh, university uh, funds. Typically, the laboratories, they also have some funds, uh, funds to support uh, such kind of research, but uh, we find this really very important for the students. That's why we also um, uh, insured some additional funds. So um, if you like traveling and um, meeting other people, this is not only uh, you know, this is something that is almost required, I would say. It's very useful for all the students, and you will enjoy that uh, for sure. So, uh, but not that we only like to, for our students, to go abroad and to socialize and, you know, to meet and to network with other um, universities. As you see, saw at the beginning, we have a lot of our students uh, that finished PhD that went abroad to, you know, the most prominent uh, uh, university in the world and companies, uh, but we also like that students from abroad come to, to study at our faculty, right? So this exchange of ideas is, should be like uh, bi-directional and is something what we, what, what we encourage for sure. That's why we give the entire PhD program in English, so all the courses are given in English. Of course, is there, is, if, if you only have Slovenian speaking uh, students um, at some class, uh, Usually, this class is given in Slovene, right? But whenever we have some foreign, you know, some, from non Slovenian speaking student, the class is given in English. So you can easily pass the entire, the entire um, PhD in, in English. Also, all PhDs that um, were written in the last couple of years at our faculty were written in English. Uh, you can write it in Slovene if you want, but uh, the English PhDs have a much wider, you know, acceptance. Like it's much easier to disseminate such work. So usually, even at or or major university I know in the world, they write English uh, PhDs in English just because of um, uh, to facilitate dissemination. So uh, that's also something that um, we uh, try to to uh, follow here. Uh, yeah, so that's why I, I don't uh, see any uh, obstacles for foreign students to do a PhD at our faculty. So now I'll ask um, uh, one of those uh, uh, PhD uh, students um, that actually joined us like this year, right? Uh, last year. La last, I mean, yeah, now, now you are in the second, yeah, no, in the second, second year. year. 
um, to maybe say a couple of words. How, how did you learn uh, for us? How did you come here? Mm -hmm. What are your impressions? And, mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Uh, my name is Ratko. It's like I'm com uh, I come from uh Bosnia and Herzegovina. Okay, so my story on free started uh, one year and a half before PhD. I was here for uh, some kind of international exchange of researcher, and I spent one uh, one year uh, here, uh, one month as a researcher. So, and th uh, this time, this idea of going to, to PhD in Ljubljana was like was creative. So, skip forward one year and a half. I finished my uh, I was finishing my master's studies, and I was thinking about should I take a should I take a, pa a gap year or not, and then I decided I will not. And I was thinking where should I apply, and what uh, isn't uh, isn't it a big challenge to do the PhD studies in foreign country? So I had uh, connections with my uh, current uh, supervisor here in Ljubljana, and uh, we, he agreed that he will mentor me for my PhD. And that's how the story started. Okay, the, I must admit you that decision uh, to study abroad isn't, uh, is, isn't easy one. Uh, when you when you enter new uh, when you enter new country new environment you need to get uh, you need to get through the adjustment process but this adjust, uh, adjustment process was very very easy because of the hard work uh, of the people in international office okay in the, the, the okay they uh, they uh, did a lot of work for me okay uh, i skipped a lot of papers a lot of forma formality to go uh, to enroll here to get in my phd studies and uh, concerning the bureaucracy of getting visa or or uh, or or some or some else uh, and something else something more similar it's like this uh, it was a really 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 easy process it was I had uh, invested a minimum amount of work, and now now I'm second year of my PhD studies, and also, and I can say that I have positive experience on this uh, in this faculty. It's like all the studies are in English. It's like people always. <coughs> And professors always ask before uh, lecture uh, lecture starts: Are are for are foreigners uh, are uh, students that not, that don't speak Slovenian? And if they are if they are present, we start uh, we start speaking Slovenian. Okay. During uh, during my second year, I learned I learned a lot of Slovenian. So for me, it's not uh, it's not so hard to um, understand professors uh, in Slovenian. But concerning the PhD studies on free, from my perspective as a foreign student, I would really, really, really recommend it to all the foreign students that come from either, either from Europe or from Modirani continents. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rafa. Okay, so now let's go to some formalities. So when you... Um, if you want to apply, you'll have to do it online. So there is this EvaShop portal that you have to use. Um, so the deadline for application is June 3rd. So you should be careful not to miss it. Uh, the enrollment itself will take place in September, right? So after you apply, we have this selection process, and then you are notified whether you're accepted or not. And then in September, you're able to officially also enroll into the program, and then the, the program itself starts in October. Usually the lectures start in the second week of the semester. Um, so the application should include a CV, so you should really uh, put some effort into it. Uh, this, is some, this is something that is worth putting some effort into it because then you, you can always reuse it for some other reasons. Um, then there are some certificates that you have to provide and I think that out of these uh, things that are listed here, I think that the most important is the motivation letter. So you should really uh, explain why you want to spend four years doing research. Uh, what motivates you? Uh, and, how, and of course, it's also, also good to know already what, who will advise you. So you should really already now start 
communicating with potential advisors and try to define a research topic that you will pursue during your doctor's uh, studies. And uh, related to that is also the two recommendation letters. So these are usually from people that uh, you collaborated with that uh, are sent directly to us, so you really don't see the, the content of the recommendation letters. At least you should, you're, not able, you're not supposed to see it. But they provide some, let's say, more objective evaluation of, of, of you. Um, so then we compare the, the CV and the motivation letter with what other people say about you. Um, OK, so this is the procedure. Are there perhaps any questions regarding this? No? Um, OK, so of course, um, you have to earn your living during the studies. Uh, so uh, we offer a number of uh, positions as a researcher. Um, so you could either be a, research, a researcher at a, a project that's ongoing. You, if you're lucky enough, you can get this junior research position, which is financed by the, the country, by the uh, Agency for Research uh, of Republic of Slovenia. You can get employed as a teaching assistant at our faculty, which means that you will spend 50% of your time uh, assisting classes, and the remaining 50% of your time um, working on your doctoral uh, thesis. Um, there are some uh, uh, scholarship uh, possibilities, so you should check this uh, Slovenian scholarship fund. And you, you should go to the web page that we have at our uh, web page, the faculty web page, where we list the current open positions for researchers at ongoing projects. Right? Um, so perhaps this is also a good starting point to find advisors. So those that have the money to fund your research are probably the, the first choice you should try um, in contact. Um, so uh, one major uh, Slovene company, Gorenje, this company based in Slovenia, uh, is offering a scholarship for, for doctoral studies. Uh, so they are, as the, let's say, the larger, largest producer of uh, home appliances uh, are interested in uh, testing the interfaces of these embedded systems that uh, drive the appliances, right? Um, and this is something that uh, it's traditionally done by hand. So a, a test engineer will craft the individual tests that will be used to evaluate the, the interface of these embedded systems, right? Uh, so because this is a tedious work, the idea here is can we automate this? So can we devise a, a machine learning al algorithm that would uh, generate tests uh, to test the, the, these uh, embedded controllers. Um, so if you're interested into this uh, research area, you should contact Gorenia. Um, another research opportunity which is uh, new is this collaboration that we started last year with uh, the Joint Research Center. So uh, it's based in Italy, in Ispra, which is a relatively small town north of Milano. Uh, so this is part of the U European Commission. So this is uh, um, a really large institution. So uh, the, the whole JRC employs over 2,700 researchers that cover all the different areas that the European Commission is interested in. And their main uh, um, task is to really understand some, let's say, problems that are related uh, to to the, let's say, to, to the, in this case, uh, cybersecurity, and uh, uh, advise policymakers uh, what, what are the laws that need to be passed in order to somehow regulate certain aspects of how the European society works, right? So here you have the chance that through research you can impact the, the laws that will be passed at the European level. Um, so the unit that we are closely collaborating with, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, specialized in cybersecurity and law enforcement. Uh, so the, the idea of this collaboration with JRC is that they fund doctor students for two years. So for two years, if you pick this option, you'll be employed by the European Commission, which means a really nice salary. 
So you're, you're working for the European Commission. But besides that, you get the chance to meet all these researchers that are, let's say, top researchers in the European uh, uh, arena uh, in cybersecurity. Um, so there are two topics that will be uh, sh uh, advertised for this year. So one is machine learning for user profiling and anomaly detection for in this smart uh, environment. Um, so this is a really big issue, right? Because the, the home automa automation uh, and the smart ho houses and the smart city is bringing many sensors in our daily lives. Um, and of course, they are concerned uh, on what are the privacy issues related to this, right? So how to protect the privacy of, uh, let's say, the average user. So what are, let's say, at the end, what are the laws that need to be passed uh, that will regulate what kind of data can be used for what purpose, right? Um, so that we are not uh, under the big brother. Um, the other topic is machine learning for image and uh, biometrical data analysis. So this is related to the law enforcement. Uh, they are so JRC is collaborating also with Europol, which is the, let's say, the International European Police. Uh, and they, of course, when they gather some uh, um, criminal data on some criminal activity, they need to, to analyze this data. Usually this, these are images or voice recordings or video recordings or some sensor data. Also, let's say, uh, the, 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 the Car in, uh, the computer in the car will uh, re record uh, something about what the movement of the car, uh, and sometimes also this data has to be analyzed. Um, so this is uh, another topic that is really of interest. So the, the idea of this collaboration is that we bring the expertise in machine learning, because they are experts in, let's say, uh, wireless and smart home technology, uh, and they are also experts in, let's say, biometrical data uh, sensors but they really lack the machine learning expertise. So this is the, what the doctor students will bring to them when they are there working at, uh, in ISPRA. Okay, um, so I think this concludes the formal presentation. Now we are